Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find valid matrix given row and column sums. So another matrix problem, and I will admit it's pretty tricky, but I like this problem. I want to admit to you that the first solution that I was able to come up with, I think conceptually is actually relatively simple. Like conceptually, it'll make a lot of sense. I can walk you through my exact thought process on how I arrived at it. In terms of the time complexity, it is optimal. In terms of the space complexity, it is optimal. And we do not modify the inputs whatsoever. So this is the solution I was able to come up with, but then I skimmed through the editorial and there are a few solutions that in my opinion are actually less intuitive conceptually, but the code for those solutions is actually more simple than my solution. But I think that most of you guys prefer a solution that you'd be able to come up with by yourself. So I think that's what I'm going to try to prioritize this solution. And I can try to also maybe walk you through why some of the other potential solutions work. But again, they require modifying the inputs, which sometimes isn't allowed. The problem description is actually pretty simple. We're given a array row sum and column sum. So this basically tells us the dimensions of our uh, matrix that we're going to be dealing with. Right now we're dealing with a three by three matrix. So take the length of this. It'll tell you how many rows. Take the length of this. It'll tell you how many columns. Now, as the name kind of implies, this tells us that the row sum of the first row is going to be five. The second row is going to be seven and the third row is going to be 10. This tells us that the column sum of this matrix is eight or, or this column is eight. This column is six and this column is also eight. The only thing we want to do is build a matrix and then return it that like satisfies this criteria. The good thing is we're only going to be dealing with values that are greater than or equal to zero. Negative values actually would make this a lot more complicated. Well, maybe actually not, but I, I won't get too into that. But there could be many solutions. And I'll show you that actually this is a very simple problem to solve conceptually, at least. You do not have to solve some really big like matrix math equation, like some linear algebra formula or something like that. You do not have to do that in this problem. There's not just one solution. And I'll show you why. So as soon as I saw the problem, I was thinking it's pretty easy to create a matrix that satisfies one of these, right? Like that's a good start. Why not just start by satisfying the first condition? And then maybe there's some way we can iterate over the entire thing to satisfy the second condition. So what I said is, okay, row sums are this. Well, that tells us that the first row can look like something like this, five, zero, zero. The second row can look like this, seven, zero, zero. Lastly, 10. Zero, zero. Right now, the row sums are actually all satisfied, every single one. The problem is the column sums aren't. This one should be eight, this one should be six, this one should also be eight. So what can we do? Well, we have to run some sort of validation logic on this. How would you even know that this column is not valid? How would you know that? Well, first, let's just go column by column and satisfy an individual column. How can we do that? Let's just try to satisfy this one. Okay, I'm at the beginning. I'm gonna compute the sum of the column. That should be pretty trivial to do, and it looks like it's gonna be 22 if I'm doing my math right. Hopefully I don't make some you know, addition or arithmetic mistakes. If I do, please excuse me. So this is 22. Obviously it's greater than eight. Right now the sum is 22, we want it to be eight. So what do we do? Well, there's guaranteed to be a valid solution. So we should be able to make this work. What can I do? Well, all I'm trying to do right now is get the sum of this down to eight. So I'm going to be greedy. Why am I going to be greedy? Like, I'm not just going to take this five. I'm not just going to say just decrement it by one so that we can put a one over here. I'm not just going to say that. I'm going to try to remove as much as I possibly can from here, because if I only remove one and maybe I only remove one from here and then I get down here and I try to remove all 10 of it. Well, in total, we only removed 12 from 22, but we actually needed to remove 14 if we want to get it down to eight. Therefore, I'm going to be greedy because we don't know when we're going to run out of values. So when I say I'm being greedy, I'm saying I'm going to go value by value in this column and remove as much as possible. So right now, the deficit, the diff is this. 22 minus 8 is 14. We need to get rid of 14. So I'm going to look 
at 14 and I'm going to look at the value here. Obviously, we can't decrement this by 14. So basically, we look at these two values and we compute the minimum of them. And whatever that minimum is, we're going to remove it from this particular cell. So I'm going to set this now to zero, but I'm not just going to set it to zero because now we've invalidated the row sum. So, okay, whatever I removed from here, I'm just gonna be lazy and throw it over to this guy. It's this guy's problem now. He's gonna have to fix his own problem because all I'm doing right now is just validating this column. And by doing this, I'm ensuring that we don't mess up any of the rows. As long as we don't mess up any of the rows and we validate this column, we should be good. So that's what I'm gonna do. And so now that I've done that, obviously the column sum has been decremented by five. It should be 17 now. So I'm gonna scribble this out and we're gonna keep going. So now this is 17, but we want it to be eight. That's a diff of nine. So what's the minimum, nine or seven? Seven is smaller, so at most we can remove seven from this cell. So I'm going to remove seven. I'm gonna set it to zero now, and I'm gonna make it this guy's problem now. And I'm going to continue. Now we've lost seven. So now the sum is going to be 10 of this column, but we want it to be eight. So once again, 10 minus eight, that's two. So two or 10, which one of them is smaller? It's two. So at most we can remove two from this 10. So what am I going to do? Remove two. It should now be eight. And I'm going to make it the next guy's problem. So far, we've actually gotten closer to the solution. It's kind of like solving a Rubik's cube in some ways. We didn't mess up any of the rows and we fixed this column. It now has a sum of eight. By shifting a value from here to its neighbor, none of the rows get messed up. The column sum of this is now eight. This one stays zero, but now this one is something else. It looks like to me it's now about 14. That's obviously greater than six. At this point, you probably get the solution. You see what I'm about to do. Don't even think about it from the perspective of individual cells. What I did was we started with a sum of 22. I took 14 of it and shifted it right so that we could only have eight here. What do you think I'm gonna do with this 14 now? Well, we only want six. I'm gonna take eight of it and shift it to the right. And it's guaranteed that by the time we reach the last column that we are complete, like we're finished now. Why is that? Because take a look at the inputs. Take a closer look at the inputs. The sum of this array is always going to be the same as the sum of this array. It has to. It's mathematically impossible for it not to. If I told you this row, this row, and this row added together is going to be 22, and the numbers are all greater than or equal to zero, well, by definition, don't the columns, like the sum of all the columns, which includes the exact same set of numbers, don't they also have to sum up to the same amount? Of course they do. If they didn't, we would have a contradiction. And that's, you know, just not possible generally with math. So this is how we're going to solve the problem. I will admit in terms of coding it, it's a little bit cumbersome, but, you know, for a medium problem, it's nothing crazy. Honestly, I think there are elite code easies that are harder uh, to code up, but that doesn't mean that the problem I'm about to show you right now is easy. But yeah, this was uh, my thought process or whatever, if that's helpful or if it's not. But let's get into it. First things first, let's at least know what dimensions we're dealing with when it comes to this matrix. That much is pretty much given to us. Same thing, get the length of the column sum should tell us the number of columns. It doesn't necessarily have to be a square matrix, by the way. But in terms of the result, we're going to create a matrix initially with all zeros, and it's going to have the same dimensions as the dimensions declared up above. So this is usually the best way to do it in Python. I cover this in my Python for Coding Interviews course, by the way. The phase one that we were talking about, just kind of at least make sure all the row sums are technically correct. So pretty much for row in every single row, I'm going to set the first value in the output matrix. So in this particular row, I'm going to set the first value at index zero. I'm going to set it to the row sum, the corresponding row sum for whatever particular row. So we're validating this row. It has the appropriate row sum. Now let's validate or, you know, fix the columns. So I'm going to say for every column in the columns that we have, first things first, let's compute the current column sum. Who knows? It might be valid. So let's initialize it to zero. Then we can say for R in range rows and 
pretty straightforward. Just gonna add to this variable the result at that row at this column. Uh, in case you're an advanced Python person, let me show you a little one-liner that you could actually do if you wanted. You could say for R in range rows, and then here you could just create an array of all of these values and then take the sum of it. So this is how you could make it a one-liner, but this does consume extra space, I think. So if we wanna avoid that, let's just not do that. And now let's do the shifting that I was talking about if we need to. So I'm gonna say while the current column sum is greater than the column sum, that this column is supposed to have, which is given to us in this parameter, of course. So while that's the case, we're gonna do the shifting. I'm also gonna have a pointer for the row because we're gonna be going down the column until this is no longer like invalid, until like the current column sum has been satisfied. Now, I don't need to add this as part of the condition. I don't need to make sure that this is greater than the number of rows because we know we're going to be able to remove that amount that we need to. We're never gonna run out of elements. So I actually don't need this condition. I'm not gonna have it. We might run out of space. So so let me kind of zoom out. First thing we want to do is get the diff, right? Like let's compute the diff by taking the current column sum and decrementing what the column sum is supposed to be. So obviously this one is too great and we expect that we kind of front loaded the first column with all the elements. So then we need to know what's the max amount that we can shift. So it's going to be, remember, the minimum of the value at that position in the output matrix currently and the diff that we just computed. So we wanna take the minimum because that's the max amount that we can actually remove. So I call it max shift, but maybe there's a better word for it. But this is the value we're going to remove from the current position in the matrix. Remember, we're at this column and we're trying to go down that column until we've removed enough. So this is the value we're going to decrement from this, but we're also gonna add it to the position to the right of it. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna do column plus one here. Once again, you might be thinking, well, what about when we get to the last column? Isn't column plus one gonna be out of bounds? No, because at that point, the last column will already be valid and this loop shouldn't execute as long as there is a correct solution to the problem. So therefore, I'm not gonna add that kind of logic. If you wanna be safe, you can, but I'm not gonna do it. Oh, by the way, we're not decrementing here, we're adding to that. And while we're at it, we should probably update this variable as well. So we're gonna be decrementing from that variable. So down here, whoops, I'm going to copy that variable and decrement from it, max shift. So that's the current column sum. If we shift this amount away from the current column, obviously we should decrement that from here. And lastly, don't forget to increment R because we don't wanna be stuck at this position forever. There it is. This is probably the hard part of the algorithm, right? I think probably the minimum logic, knowing like the matrix manipulations, but at the same time, none of this is crazy complicated, right? Like conceptually, it's pretty simple what we're doing. I drew it out for you. And I'm pretty sure you were able to understand that part. Sometimes translating it into code isn't always easy, but that's a skill that you can develop just by practicing. So we're pretty much done here. Now that we're done down here, we're going to return the result. And as you can see, it works. And I think this is the most optimal solution. I think it's even more technically optimal than the solution that they've shown us here. Like this solution, if you look at the leak code editorial, conceptually, this is actually a bit more complicated, I think, than my solution. But I will quickly explain it for you. I will say the downside of this solution is, as you can clearly see, the row sum and the column sum are being changed. Sometimes you're not allowed to change the input. So it's better to implement solutions where you don't do that. So in many ways, this solution here is actually pretty similar to the original solution I showed you, except it initializes everything with zeros. And instead of trying to remove the max amount that we can to shift it over to the next guy, it just populates each value. And how do you think it does it? It's also in many ways greedy. It will try to fill each spot with the max value it can possibly have. So what it's doing is first it's saying, okay, this cell, this is where we're starting with. What's the max value we could possibly put here? Well, we know the row can't have anything larger than a five and the column can't have anything larger than an eight. So we can't put an eight here. That would obviously invalidate the row. So we put a five. And then what do you do? Well, if we were going to the next cell, we'd probably ask the same question, wouldn't we? What's the max value we can put here? Either the max of the row or the column, not the max, sorry, the minimum. 
because if we put a six here, that would invalidate the row. So then what are you going to do? Put a five here? Obviously not, because we can't have two fives. That's sums to greater than five. So as we go, as we populate values, we update these guys. So when I put a five here, what I should have said is now this is going to be zero and this is going to be three. So now when I populate this, I take the minimum of these two. So it's going to be a zero. Same thing here. I take the minimum of these two. It's going to be a zero. So these will stay unchanged. Same with this one. That's pretty much it. I'll quickly just fill out the rest for you here. We take the minimum of these two. It's going to be three. So what am I going to do? I'm going to update both of these. This is going to be four now, and this is going to be zero. So over here, take the minimum of these two. It's going to be four. So put a zero over here now and put a two over here. Obviously, minimum of these two is going to be a zero. And you probably get the idea this will be a zero. Take the minimum of it. The minimum of these two is going to be two. Put that there. And then this will now be down to zero. This will be down to eight. And when you get to the last cell, you can probably expect that both of these are going to be the exact same. So we would put an eight here. Obviously, this matrix is now valid. All of these should be zeros because we don't really need anything for them. So it's actually possible that for you, conceptually, this solution is easier to understand. For me, I think this is a little bit harder to come up with. It actually involves like doing a bit more changing. It actually involves changing the inputs, which for me was actually more of a logical jump. But clearly, as you can see, the code is very, very simple, isn't it? Maybe you prefer this solution. I will say that, you know, in terms of space complexity, it's pretty much the same. It is technically constant space if you don't count changing the input arrays. And I think if it's this solution you prefer or the first one that I showed you, either way, you would probably pass the interview if I was your interviewer. But I'll leave it there. The code is already here, as you can see. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.